This isn't a story about running. This isn't a story about accomplishments, awards, or individual achievements. This is the story of the human spirit. This is the story of succeeding against all odds, of using your platform big or small to make an impact on kids, communities, and even countries. This is Mario Mendoza, and this is his story and how he's using his feet as a vehicle for change. This is 100 miles. It's 12 a.m. on the central coast of California. As this run gets going, uh -huh. I don't want to be yeah, thinking yeah, as clear. Yeah. 70 miles in, you guys are going to have to be on yeah. top of all this. Yeah. And Mario Mendoza is about to embark on a 100-mile run. I pray for good feet and just thank you that uh, we can share a message with what we do. Run, not race. There's no competitors, no prize money, no sponsors. Just a goal to inspire and unite. All right, guys. All right. Good luck. Good luck. God be with you guys. All right. The two places that I can think of that feel like home would be here and 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 where um, my parents are from. And I've told people like I love Bend. I love Bend so much. Um, but this is, this was my home, you know, like this, when I'm here, there's uh, definitely like those warm fuzzies you get. It's been over a decade since Mario lived here, but his heart has never left. This is kind of where the love of running began with these mountains here. And, and not even knowing it was a sport, just getting up here to, to do a workout and to hang out. Um, I didn't even know it was a sport. I just really loved it. I loved coming up here, running up here, and sitting up here and watching the sunset and then trying to make it really fast down the hill before it was too dark. We titled this, this run 100 Miles to Build a Bridge. I think that right now in our country, we have a, a lot of things that we have to work hard at. There's a lot of difficult challenges ahead of us right now. I think about how much bigger it's become because running was really just kind of a, a form of play. And then now it's trying to do something with it, you know, a lot more than, than just the running. I could have just go run a 5K, that would be a lot nicer. Or a 10K would be nice too, or even a marathon would be pretty nice to do. But 100 miles, it scares me, it's very scary. It's a long ways to go and I know that there's gonna be a lot of times where I'm gonna doubt why I'm even doing this. But what I wanna say is that it's our responsibility to overcome the obstacles that we're going through. And the obstacles that we're going through is that we need unity. It's gonna be different than most races I've done because this is this is for the, the people of, of Cambria and for this whole area that is so special to me. He's such a caring person. He really cares about other people very, very deeply. 
Um, and he's not just somebody who just cares about his own running, but he's always looking for another purpose in why he's doing something, you know, or another way um, for his running to open up other doors and help other people. If I had to describe him, yes, I would absolutely want to list his characteristics in terms of what he's accomplished as a runner, but that's only part of the story. <laughs> Mario has a ton of talent. Oh, he's the real deal. He's extraordinary. It's a gift. It's a gift from God. Yeah! It was an instant love with trail running that has gone on now for a good 10 years. Mario loved to play outside, chase all kinds of animals, lizards, uh, snakes, turkeys. <laughs> he was a little bit wild at the ranch. <laughs> great memories growing up there. It was, it was not an easy life, but it was a great life there. Yeah, so we grew up uh, in this house here, and um, this was a house we lived in for like at least 15 years. So this is kind of the one I remember the most. Um, and we would actually do loops here on the ranch. So, so I set up a, a one mile loop that we could do like that loops around like a, a figure eight. It just uh, was a big connection to being outside, to um, my culture. It was huge because we didn't really have um, a lot of other families to interact with. So. Uh, even though I was living in the U.S., I was born in the U.S., like a big part of my upbringing was in the Mexican culture until I started going to school and learning English and connecting there as well. Oh, how are you? Yeah. I'm your old sister. I know. I know. I can tell you. I know. So the crazy thing is from here you can see what I'm, the route I'm doing. Morro Bay Rock. You can see it on the on the coast. It's like a little dot right over where the water kind of hits the the bank there. There's a little rock popping up, and that's a very like historical rock. And that's where we'll do the boat crossing. It's always hard running in the dark, so I was excited for the sun to start coming up. You know, 60 miles to go. It sounds scary, but. If I can get through the next 20 still feeling like about where I'm at, then it's going to put us in a really good spot. It's definitely starting to get tougher, but you know, I expected it. Guys, that helped my pace right there with the boat. Running always brings a lot of experiences with it. It's not just about the training and the racing. It's experiences with other cultures. It's experiences on human nature. And it's just experiences with yourself and figuring out what is inside of you. And I think Mario's really kind of figured out a lot of that stuff over the last couple of years and really kind of been able to use that as this platform to kind of talk to other people and to use those experiences he's got to relate to other people. I think with, with Mario, there's just a, an approachability and a warmth that people are naturally drawn towards. I can see, yeah, I've got big ears. They stick out a little bit. Um, but, but I've got pretty good hair right now, so that makes... <laughs> That makes up for it, right? And so, so, so you see the, the good and the bad. The mirror is Jesus. <laughs> the, the, the spiritual mirror, the reflection into our spirit is Jesus. This issue that we have, like bridging the gap between the US and Mexico is bigger than a 5K or 10K fun run. It's going to be hard and it's going to take a long time. And so I feel like that 100 mile analogy really plays to that very, very well. When I was growing up, it was kind of confusing because at home, everything was the Mexican culture. Si, va a correr en la, en la, en la, como se llama, stroller. And then when I went to school, 
Everything was supposed to be the American culture. It was this tension between two sides of who I was and feeling like I didn't understand that I could be both. Like I just thought I was supposed to pick one side. He is a part of both cultures and he celebrates both. That's just a part of who he is. I think a lot of times in my life, I uh, didn't really know which one to identify with more. But now today, I, I really think I'm both. Having that dual identity of both countries and being able to celebrate that and not be you know, ashamed of either one in either place, especially at a time in our culture where you know, things are complicated and especially between the United States and Mexico when people are talking about putting up walls between the two and that's basically talking about putting up a wall between someone's self. That's a, that's a pretty complicated concept to be wrestling with. I was very frustrated with this whole like building a wall because I can't imagine a wall between like the two parts of who I am. <laughs> like, so like I, I tried to imagine it and I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Why would you divide like, you know, two sides? Like um, that just, to me, that just, uh, really kind of goes backwards in trying to address an issue. And this will not be easy. It's not an easy task. It's not like you just start doing it and the next day we're all gonna be friends and the whole country is gonna be fixed. No, it's gonna be very difficult. But, but if we take responsibility ourselves, one person can do a lot of things if they do not give up. How you feeling? It's tough. This run, this 100 miles that we're doing, it's like we're saying is things in life can be difficult, but they can be very meaningful if, if, if you stick with it. We're almost halfway. And difficult things does not mean it's not the right path. Difficult things doesn't mean that, oh, I must be doing the wrong things. No, sometimes perseverance is the most we can get out of this life. Like, it's like this beautiful thing of achievement. When you grow up on a farm and you see that growing something good takes a lot of time, all of that like started clicking with me as a kid because I learned uh, it takes time, it takes a lot of patience to, to, to do big things. So I, I related difficulty not necessarily being the wrong path. Sometimes difficulty can actually be the path that's leading you to um, success because it's work that you're putting in. Very few runners in a 100 mile race are actually racing another competitor. You're not out there racing, you know, the guy next to you. You two are helping each other get to the finish line. But when you get in one, I feel like it's to see what happens when you um, attempt to kind of reach over the top with your body and to see how far you can take it. And there's something in, intriguing and romantic about running 100 miles. This is a bronze medal for a world championship. It was kind of one of those rare races where every dream goal came true and won. And I remember like that last half mile, man, I couldn't believe it. I was crying honestly, just cause I had a goal as a kid to be top 10 in the world. And, and it came true when I wasn't even thinking about that goal. You know, like when I was thinking about my team, and so uh, I keep that one in the middle because kind of just makes me focus on the right stuff, you know? My teammates asked me to hold the flag for us in the, in the ceremony. This was before I ended up being the top American. And to me, that was like, they're standing behind what they know I'm trying to do, you know? And <laughs> man, that, Jeez, I mean, like that meant so much to me. Like, I, I mean, I, I told them, but I, I should tell them again because it's like, that was powerful to see that. 
When I started experiencing some of these ultras, I realized that I really loved the, the challenge, the way it tested me as a person. Like I discovered that these races just break you down to, um, to this really raw place. It's been super hard. And then you start really noticing other runners that are able to dig just super deep and it's, it inspires you to learn to do the same, right? To, to push beyond what your mind thinks are your limits. My Achilles, right Achilles is a little tight, but we're surviving right now. No matter who you are or what type of an athlete you are or how fast you are at getting through a 100 miler, that mental strength is gonna be the key to getting through 100 miles. If you think about running 100 miles, it kind of like most people just kind of blows their mind. If you're a runner that's planning on running 100 miles, you already have it in your mind that you're gonna get through that thing no matter what. Put together a little taping and some compression and um, it's enough to keep moving, so that's kind of what we're happy about. When your body is fighting everything against you and screaming at you to like, just sit on the trail and quit, a lot of times you, you don't respond the way you think you're going to. In those places, I believe, is when the spirit of a person can really shine. I believe like the mind just breaks down. I believe like physically you start to break down. But I believe that if you've developed a deeper reason for why you're doing this, maybe it's not a thought, but it's this deep emotion and feeling. I think that's when it's really neat to see a person's like inner spirit take over and shine and I think it's some of the most powerful moments of a person's life for sure. I'm not worthy. I I am spiritually very poor. Why, why do I have such a beautiful family? Why does God take care of my needs? Why do I get to experience the very pleasures and emotions that God experiences if I and, and broke. I think getting rid of like these things that control us, our body can control us, our mind can control us, um, but our pride, man, pride, <laughs> it's very subtle. Like that can control us, I think, the most and causes you to like not find joy in the things that are around you, you know, like to find the things that you do have, to be excited about the opportunities you did get and to, to really cherish like, those victories you, you did find, you know, like you crossed that line and, and you got to win races that you shouldn't have won. And that, there was so much joy in that that I was missing out on um, because I was like, trying to prove myself you know and so I discovered that like did a photo shoot with my friend and we just happened to take a photo on this bridge and then when I saw the photo I was like man like it was weird it was like that's that's better than a wall what a bridge does is that it it gives access to both sides it connects two sides and it creates this platform to be able to walk from one to the other and, and it unites them. If anybody can kind of bridge that gap between those two communities and kind of help bring people together, it's going to be a person like Mario uh, who cares so deeply about both communities but also has something like a platform like running to stand on. I think he's just 
giving of himself in a way that is rare and is really genuine. And I think the stuff that's going to fix the situation right now really is seeing people from both sides who have connection to both sides, seeing them do great things in society and community. The way I can be a bridge between two cultures is by creating more bridges, like just as many bridges as possible within the community, like mentoring them, uh, valuing them, lifting them up, benefit from this workout so we can have a good race, okay? All right, let's work together, ready? And, and having them be from, from both sides. You're little by little changing people. You never know, but like one person could could end up having just tremendous impact and influence on everything around them. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be an ultra marathon, but, but if, you, if you commit, if you keep pushing through, um, I think we'll get to that finish line and we'll see some results. I still love the US. I still love being here. One of the things you always feel when you're up here is like that, you see how that the wind kind of brush comes in and it's just like, it's like a, like a hug. It's like a warm hug and you just, you just feel so peaceful up here. The light that he brings to the world, I mean, it's just infectious. Very proud very, very proud. I know that he's making a difference in multiple communities because I've, I've seen those kids and I've talked to those kids. It's very special to see the support of the town to build bridges. This is something very special for the whole family. It brings back just all these dreams and goals and, and a part of me is like, okay, we, we have done something. This quiet, relentless pursuit he's had of his goals and where he, you know, he's humble and yet has focus and determination and seems unwilling to, to give up. On Saturday, November 10th, 15 hours after beginning his journey, Mario's quiet, relentless pursuit brought him home. His impact was felt. His vehicle for change had carried him a hundred miles. Truly inspiring moments are rare, but when you see them, you feel them, and you realize that hope begins to happen. Dreams develop into realities. And kids? Communities. And even countries can begin to change. This isn't a story about running. This is Mario Mendoza's story. And how he's using his feet to bridge the divide between the people and countries he loves. This is, this is what it's about. 
out. Let's all do it. Let's all do it. The thing that I have hope in is I believe that a few people can make a big difference. Like I believe that when a few people get that fire inside of them and they're not going to give up, that it impacts the community around it. And just how it's, it's gone in a negative spiral down, I think it can go in a positive spiral back up. And so I look at guys that have made such big impact, like, you know, Martin Luther King kind of comes to mind. And, um, and, and I believe at times he probably thought nothing was working. I believe at times he probably thought there was not much hope. Um, but don't get discouraged, you know? You gotta, you gotta keep pushing through, just like those ultras where you hit those rough patches. You have to keep moving and uh, my, my prayer, my hope is that we'll get help, you know, that more people will want to help. And, and I just, I have my hopes on that, not on the negative comments said and not on um, the direction where we seem to be going because I, I believe so much that that can change quickly.